D. Cruz here. Um, I hope I'm not. I hope um, you can see here. Okay, I guess we got enough light to see. Um, I'm just making a video because I've been so busy with my Christian stuff, which all my stuff is Christian. Whenever you're a Christian, it's all Christian. Um, but I've been so busy with my Christian channel, my main, you know, Bible channel, talking about the Bible and that. I've been busy with that. I believe the Lord has been calling me to really, really um, reach out to Christians um, in my most recent videos. So I've been there. Um, I go wherever the Lord carries me. Um, wherever he gives me to translate, wherever he gives me a passion, um, that's where I go. Um, and my passion lately has been Bible, the Bible and Bible translation and so forth and so not. Um, uh, what I want to talk to you today, first of all, I want to say happy voting. It's election day. And um, hopefully you voted for Trump. <laughs> but some of y'all looking at me right now, you say, click this fool. Well, see, that's the problem. If you, like a lot of people, um, if you like a lot of people, are hating on Trump and hating on those that have the audacity to vote for Trump because you feel that people that vote for Trump are trying to control the nation. What are you doing if you're voting Democrat? Are you trying to control the nation? Okay. Are you trying to, you know, because you know, if you're if you if the Democrats win, then our our rights. Republicans and Christians, our rights get pushed back. If we win, if Trump wins, your rights get get get. You're going. To, Trump's going to break your heart. He's going to disappoint you because he's going to do what he said he will do, and um, he's not bluffing. Okay, um, and some things he will do, and they won't let him do it. And some, but he'll try. Like he will try to. You know, I and I'm not going to say I, this is a ukulele video, so I'm not going to say what I believe about some things because I'm probably more Republican than Trump is, okay? And I don't want to go there, so that's enough of that. But you know, those of you that voted for Trump, but YouTube, you know, YouTube lies just as much as the media. Half the videos are saying that it looks like Trump, you know, Kamala's winning. But, and then other videos are saying, oh, Kamala already knows she lost. You know, you know that's YouTube. Speaking of that, um, um, same thing here. Same thing right here. This, this lovely ukulele genre. Um, can the ukulele, I haven't even tuned this yet. I was playing on it and didn't even tune it. One thing about the ukulele is you always... Um, you always tune it. Even if you think it's already tuned, you tune it. But I didn't. Think it's tuned. Um, I just love that sound. The big question is, I was talking to somebody on a job, and he found out that I play guitar. And he was talking to somebody, you know, um, in my department. He says, oh, that D-Roy Cruz, he, did I hear he play guitar? What kind of, you know, he started asking, you know, you know questions about me playing guitar. And they got funny with it. They say, well, you know, he played the ukulele, too. He played that, too. Ukulele, what's that? You know, so we're in the locker room, and he's like, you know, um, 
so what kind of guitar? And I told him about my Schecter and all like that. And I showed him pictures of my Schecter. You know, my big white mama. That's my baby. Not only do I like white women, but that guitar resembles a good looking white woman. Okay. Um, actually, I like Asian women, but, you know, I like white women, too. You know, I am an American. I like all American women, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with black women, but I got, but you can't, you can't be an American and not like white women. That's just racist. You gotta like the white woman, okay? Alright? So, I treat white women just as, just like I treat black women. Until they start acting black, okay, then I gotta, then I gotta start, you know, Call them out like I do. Okay, that's another video, but that's on my other channel, one of my other channels. Okay, but anyway, um, um, you know, I just love American music, um, and so anyway, this guy he says uh, he saw me in the locker room and he says, uh, so you, uh, I hear you play ukulele too. You were saying something about ukulele. I says, oh yeah, that's my baby. I love the ukulele. I, he says, which one you like more? I says, I don't know. It's hard. It's like, I says, it's like as far as just coming home and practicing and, and playing, you know, simple tunes and stuff. I love my ukulele. Um, when it comes down to me really writing songs and really, really adding different textures and sounds and all like that, I love my electric guitar. But I says, between the ukulele and the acoustic guitar, I love the ukulele. Um, so, um, and this has been, in my, in my, in my, in my history, the ukulele, and I only have this one, and the reason why I have this one is because not only, um, have I been budgeting, so I've been content with such things as I have, but this is a very nice ukulele for the price. I mean... <laughs> I wish I could, like, you know, when you tap on the nylon strings, the difference between steel and nylon strings, and that's why some ukulele players play with steel strings, your finger tends to slide off when you're trying to play, you know, single notes. But um, a lot of these, you know, guitar players that can, you know, you know, shred, you know, they can do it on a ukulele as well because they're so good at it, and they can do it on the um, they can do it on a ukulele and the get to lele. And I I love to watch videos like that where they'll take something that they play on the guitar and play it on a ukulele and just play it faster, you know. But the question is, like this guy in the locker room, can a ukulele play authentic music? Can it play all American music? You got darn right it can. I am an American musician. This instrument right here is underrated. It is. And the only people that understand that are the people that are using this instrument to make money or this instrument to do concerts in places where the ukulele is already put in a high position. Where it's already put in, you know, a good place. But most places the ukulele is a novelty instrument. It, you know, like the good movie, um, good documentary, The Mighty Ute with Jim Beloff and all them. Okay, um, the ukulele is considered a novelty instrument. It's considered a joke. It's considered, you know, it died when Tiny Tim died. That was the end of it. But no, but no. When I first got into the ukulele, I was looking, I told this testimony before, I was looking for a travel guitar and for some reason, they started putting the ukulele up there on the screen, on the internet, because it's small. And so, um, I looked at that and I says, that only has four strings on it. That can't be a travel guitar. No, I want, you know, now they would have really had me fooled if they had a show to get the lately and call that a travel guitar, which that is considered a travel guitar too. Um, you look up travel guitar on the internet, you're going to see ukuleles, get to ladies, and little junior-sized guitars, 
and all that stuff. And then you're going to see stuff like um, it went out of print. The Papoose, I always wanted one. I found out that the Papoose is nothing but a guitar lately. That's all it is. Or a guitar lately. That's all it is. It is a guitar lately. That's all the Papoose is. It's a, it's a guitar lately. But it's, you know. So you got to understand the ukulele to this day is made out of its own tradition as well as guitar tradition. And also, you know, they try to expand it and help it with the baritone, which I love the baritone too. Now, is the baritone different than playing the guitar? Yes, it is. The baritone does not sound like a guitar. This is way far away from the sound of a guitar. As well as a, a baritone ukulele. But the baritone has a softer sound than the guitar. There was a good video I watched uh, the other day where a woman was showing what she likes to play on the baritone. And when it comes to the baritone, no, it was a guy. When it, it was a guy, it was a uh, radio class 101. Look him up. Um, he played a beautiful thing on the baritone. And he said, when it comes to relentless strumming, you know, strumming and making, you know, the holy work and all that stuff, and when it gets down to the, to the fancy all around music, he likes the um, regular tenor size ukulele. But when it comes to playing like special, like Spanish melodies, and when it comes to playing more melodic stuff, Melodic stuff is the proper way to say that. He likes to play the baritone. But both the baritone and the tenor, can they be used in today's modern music? Yes, they can. This never gets old. You've probably heard me strum this many times. This is something we play on the guitar. And every time I play this, it reminds me that the ukulele is a very authentic instrument. That it's not a toy. Because when I play this on the guitar. I just love that. It's very, very authentic. Can it play American music the way the guitar can? Yes, it can. And it has a better, more cleaner sound than the mandolin. Um, I wouldn't play too many bluegrass tunes on the ukulele, but everything else. Ragtime, fusion, jazz, um, blues. Now, blues on a ukulele, depending on what chords... Um, you use sound very very exotic and I admit that on the guitar when you play especially the tuning especially with that baritone tuning that guitar tuning the blue sounds very exotic on the tenor and the soprano and the concert because of the tuning the blue sounds very exotic um, you know, it, it it has a little Hawaiian ring to it when you play the blues. And I love that. 
But when it comes to the blues, I'd rather play that on a guitar. Um, I don't mind. Um, I don't mind playing the blues on here, but um, my point of the ukulele is also its own genre. I'm watching. I got food coming. I'm watching here because sometimes they're, they take all day and sometimes... Okay, get off of that. Okay, they ain't... Okay, good. I got time. 2.44. I got time. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, again, when I first saw this ukulele... Um, not this particular one, but a really one that was a little bit more expensive than this. They were showing this as a travel guitar. And I looked it up. I said, it's only got four strings. That's, that's, that's something else. So I looked it up. It's a ukulele. And so I looked up. I went to YouTube. When you look up, you know, on the Internet today, this is different than way back in the, nine, in the early 19, in the, in the ni what is it? In the early 90s, in the early 90s. Um, it's different now today everything that you type in the search bar on Google or Yahoo or something like that they're going to show you videos on YouTube that are available so I looked up these videos and one of the first videos I saw was My Guitar Gently Weeps by Jake Shimkoro and I saw that I says he's playing that on a ukulele no no. And then I listened to Tamani Gardner and I listened to Hanoto and Azita. And um and um then I went from there to listen to people with the Hawaiian music supply like Haley and um Corey. And I found Aldrin, um Music Underground. Um and Aldrin, man, he really, really, really inspired me. Jake Shimakoro, Tamani Gardner. Um, and then I started listening to their testimonies. Now, I listened to their testimonies after I bought my first ukulele. And when I got my first ukulele, the first thing I did was... I wanted to see if I play a guitar chord on here, what it would sound like. So I played this... D chord, which on the guitar is a G in the, you know, in C tuning on the guitar. And I mean, in G, C, E, A tuning on the ukulele, this here is a G chord. But on the guitar, it's a, it's a D. I said, oh, that sounds good. So I started looking at the chord book. And finding out what other chords sound like. And there are some chords. I will much admit. There are some chords. That you play on the ukulele. Now authentic players. Like Jake and Tamani Gardner. And Kaylee and Corey and all them. They have inversions of them chords. To keep it sounding more Hawaiian. Or more ukulele-ish. Okay. Um, but you know. You look at the regular Mel Bay chord book. Okay, it gives you, it only gives you major, minors, sevenths, minor sevenths, diminished, and um, ninths and sixths. That's the only chords it gives you. It doesn't give you the sus chords and, you know. So, you know, there's people on YouTube teaching you sus chords and all like that. But, you know, they're in books too. And then I got, um, I also have in my video library... For the ukulele, I have um, Herb Otto, Herb Otta, and um, the other guy, the guy he always plays with. Um, they're, they're a couple, you know, they're, they're a duet. And just like, you know, other ukulele bands, they, they travel and they play, and they play some of the most melodic stuff. Stuff that's a little bit too Hawaiian for me. I'm not really into it. They have transcriptions in that book. Um, and all like that. I'm not really into that style of ukulele, but it's good for the learning. I might start practicing it. But nonetheless, the ukulele 
is um, my favorite, just like Jim Beloff. I'm totally smitten by it. Now, how do we play the ukulele in music? Well, there's a band out there called um, that I'm subscribed to. They're called Anarchy or something like that. And um, they're, 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 they're a string, they're a small string instrument band. They have two ukulele players in there, two tenors, one baritone player, one ukulele bass player. They have two girls, and they have a guy that plays like bongos or something like that, bongos and congos and quintos, okay? And they have, um, and their music is so good. Their music is so good, and they sing, and they play, and so that's where, as a ukuleleist, or someone that really, really, really is smitten by the ukulele like I am, that's the kind of music you want to listen to. You also want to listen to stuff like, you know, you know I mean, it's okay to love playing the guitar, especially the electric guitar. Um, like I do, I, the electric guitar is my number one, but I love, you know, this is, this is how I relax, this is how I stay musical, when I'm not, when I'm not worried about, you know, my guitar chops, this is how I stay musical, um, but when I play guitar, it's all about, you know, my chops, and it's all about, you know, the, 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 there's more to learn. Because you got more frets and you got more strings. There's more to learn. And even though the ukulele can play in so many different genres, it can play in all the genres just like the guitar because it's chromatic. But, however, it, it being chromatic, the mandolin, which is chromatic, cannot compete with the ukulele as far as playing chords and playing melodic, you know, more relaxing sounds of music, and that's that's where the ukulele is really where I'm really smitten at. Um, and neither can you know the banjo, the the um, none of the mandolin families until you get this little instrument here, as small as it is. You would need to play like the octave mandolin and up in order to compete with this. You would have to play the octave mandolin and up. The octave mandolin could actually beat the ukulele as far as playing melodic styles of music. You know, ballads and, and more, you know, calmer, softer types of music. Because that's what it's for. Um, it has a deeper sound like a baritone. But nothing sounds like an octave mandolin. Um... Is it the octave mandolin? Or the octave cello? I would say by the time you get to the uh, you have the you have the mandocello. I think it's called mandocello. Yeah, it's called mandocello. That's the biggest mandolin you're gonna get is the mandocello. It's 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 a big and I think that's the one you can also use with don't quote me, I don't know. Um but the mandocello and the octave mandolin might be able to compete with this little guy. Everything else in the mandolin family. Psh. One time I was going to buy a um, mandolin. Right before I moved to Pittsburgh, I stopped at one of my local local music stores. My favorite, one of my favorite music stores. The guy. You know, the guy's a good friend of mine. He always, you know, cuts me deals on instruments and that. And he's so glad to see me because he knows I'm serious. And what I love about him is he can answer a lot of questions that a lot of music store people will lie to you about. He'll tell you the truth. And, um, and it's just a little place, small business, and he's been a struggling business owner since I first, you know, he, I was back in my um, 20s when I first met the guy. And he's been a struggling business owner all the time. And right before I moved to Pittsburgh was the last time I stopped at his music store. And I rode by there earlier this year. I rode by his shop like at the beginning of summer. He's still there. 
And I started to stop in and say hi, but he's a struggling musician and a struggling um, music store owner, you know, trying, trying to, trying to get a, get his big break. I don't want to go in there and not buy anything. You know, I'm, I'm way out of my range. I'm just riding and I'm blowing gas money. I'm not going to go in there and buy nothing. I started to think, let me go in there and buy a book just to say hello. Buy another, buy a ukulele book or buy a, you know, guitar book or something just to say hello. I said, nah, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on going. Um, eventually, um, when I was in there before I left there to come here to Pittsburgh, to move back here to Pittsburgh again, um, what I found was a mandolin for the first time. First time I ever touched a mandolin, and he was ready for me to buy it. He was trying to cut me a deal and everything um, because there were some things he had to do to it. He tuned it up for me, and he, he, you know, he looked it over real good and everything because um, he doesn't get a lot of business for his musical instruments because whatever company he's working for, he's not in it alone, and whatever company he's working for, you know, um, they try to split that money four ways or whatever, so he has to sell these instruments at their main cost. If it's a name brand instrument, he has to sell it at its cost, no breaks. But if it's something that comes from a private company or a company that died away and he's selling like stuff that they had left, then he'll give you a great deal on it. And there was a mandolin in there that he had sitting there for, you know, God knows what. It was a, you know, it wasn't used. But he said he had used it to give lessons, he had, to give mandolin lessons, you know. And so he blew the dust off of it and wiped it down for me because it had just been sitting there and I started to play it. And um, without making this long story short, I mean without making this story long, um, the point is he introduced me to the mandolin and I started to listen to it and listen to it and listen to it. And the thing was I just bought my get to Laylee. Um, before I went in there and checked out that mandolin and um, I just bought my get to Laylee and um, I didn't like that you know here I already play a tenor and the ukulele is smaller on the fretboard than a tenor did I say ukulele I meant I already had a ukulele the mandolin is smaller on the fretboard than this tenor ukulele. It has a smaller fretboard, and because you have two strings for each of the four courses here, you know, you, you got to really, really, really be more precise with your fingers and all like that. And you can get used to that. I was getting used to it. Now, I think the mandolin would be a good instrument if you play with a ukulele. If you play it like backup, and I've seen out of here on YouTube, a mandolin play the lead parts while the ukulele is doing the strumming. Now, and I think that's a good setup. But to play a mandolin the way I play a ukulele, where I'm writing songs and I'm, I'm playing some of my favorite little soft little notes and little soft notes in there and all like that, it just ain't. It just just wasn't you know. And I thought about it and I looked at him. I said, you know what? I got to get to Laylee at home. That get to Laylee sounds a little bit like a mandolin when you hit certain strings or you play two strings together. Okay? And it has a very pronounced sound because it's made it's made to be louder. And it, you know, so, you know, instead of having all them strings, I'm thinking, why do I want to play an eight string mandolin? When I have a six string get to Laylee, you know, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, you don't understand the mandolin, dude. You're right. You know, I'm not in the bluegrass. I don't understand where I need to put my fingers through all that little tight space when I'm not playing bluegrass. I, I really don't. I think if you're going to play um, regular music, you know, regular American music, more popular music, and that's what the ukulele is for. It's for more popular 
music. Um, Hawaiian music is popular music. Um, so, you know, especially in that part of the world. But um, nothing can beat this. The only thing that can beat this is two things. Okay? Is the octave, octave, man, well, four things. The octave, well, four, three or four. Octave mandolin, the mandocello, um, the odd, the ood, the odd, the ood. I don't know how you pronounce it. Is it ood or odd? Okay. O U D, that thing. The one with the with the with the head bent and it's got like eight strings and it's a bowl. I've seen Jewish people play that thing. That that's separate. That's a total different instrument by itself. Um the dulcimer, believe it or not, can come close. If you really know how to play a dulcimer, I've seen some people play the dulcimer, okay, especially the lap dulcimer, um, and play the dulcimer in such a beautiful way like, like what's his name, Steve Seifert. He's, look him up here on YouTube. He'll play stuff on the dulcimer that sounds like, you know, somebody playing something on the ukulele, okay. And he's really, really, really good. He stays within a country southern music type of vein, but he also knows how to play gospels and contemporary gospels and you know, and he's a very, very he's like the BB King of the Dulcimer. I mean he's really, really, really good. And he really makes a Dulcimer you know, he makes you want to play the Dulcimer. Matter of fact, because of him, people like him, I have a Dulcimer. Right there. I don't know if you can see that right there behind this book. See it right there? See my dulcimer right there? I have a dulcimer. Because of people like him. Just like I have this because of people like Tamani Gardner and Jake Shimakura. Um, And I'm not going to take my shoes off and play like Tamani Gardner. Okay? And I'm not going to add pedals and... and and, you know, learn all these 100 and some pop songs to sound like Jake Shimkora. But, um, if you don't know that um, Tamani loves to play with her uh, naked feet and her lovely legs showing every single concert. I remember she did a concert. It was the dumbest thing ever. She did a concert somewhere in Hawaii by the river one time. And it was like a storm going on in, in Hawaii that was getting ready to happen. And her dress was flying all over the place. And she was holding her dress from, you know, showing, you know, what's underneath it. She was holding her dress and ne she never missed a beat. She was strumming and she... You know, put her, put her, put her hand down there, put her dress back in, okay. And she's holding her dress while the band were playing. Oh, okay, I got to play. Go back to playing. Here comes the wind again. Put her hand down there, hold her dress. You know, her dress was going all over the place. And um, you know, that's that's her style. Um, as a Christian, that would never be my style or any woman that I'm with. Her style. I don't play that. Okay. Um, nobody gets to watch your dress blowing around but me, okay? Nobody gets to be turned on with that but me, okay? Um, but, um, you know, um, it's amazing of uh, the history of this ukulele. It's very spiritual. Um, going all the way back to what was going on at the time that it was created. Um, all the way till today to where we have people and a lot of times and this is the last thing I want to say in closing you don't know like there's a lot of musicians that play the ukulele they even play while they're in concert and you had no idea that they would do that but they play the ukulele 
behind the scenes. And they even write songs on the ukulele. I'm talking about professional musicians. I'm trying to think. I can't think of the top of my head which one um, decided to stop in the middle of his concert and get out a ukulele and impress everybody. And I mean, he played the ukulele with the band. He was picking notes. He was doing all kinds of things on a ukulele. Like, he wasn't no guy that just grabbed the ukulele and said, oh, I'll play the guitar so I can play the ukulele too. No. He had been practicing. He had been practicing and working on this song. And working on it with the band as well. And I don't know if it was John Mayer or who that was, but he just pulled a ukulele out of the hat. And when he played it, he was not trying to be, you know, silly. He was dead serious. Okay? And I'm not trying to be silly. I'm dead serious. This is... And there's a lot of people who play the ukulele on their, in their music. They're writing songs with these ukuleles. They're playing them in the background. You do not know because you don't listen. And there's times I can listen to something. I was listening to something a week ago. Me and a friend at work. And we were listening to something. And I says, well, I know that one thing back there is a ukulele. Because I know that sound. I know that ukulele sound. So whatever he's doing in the video, he ain't including the ukulele. But that's a ukulele in the background. I can hear it. The ukulele has its own sound. It does not sound like an acoustic guitar. Now this one here has a low G. So when I play like Christian song, I get a warmer sound. When I play minor chords, when I play minor chords, and then I even get a warmer sound. And I love the low G. I love the high G too, because that's what I started out with. But I love the low G because with the low G, I can play a more higher range of songs. I can you know, I can play more, I can play more songs, whereas with the high G, I can play, let me say that again, with the low G, I can play more songs, with the high G, I may have to change instruments every now and then, I might have to switch to my baritone, but ever since I put this low G on here, I hardly ever touch my baritone anymore because I love the way that low G sounds with these, these solo strings, you know. See, that's a different sound than what you hear on the baritone. So don't let nobody tell you that, oh, you know, you play, you putting on the low G, you're making it sound like a guitar. No, you're not because these strings, when you put this low G on here, it's really low. And it's low, you go from a deep bass tone to this. That's not a baritone and that's not a guitar. So you're still playing the ukulele and playing in the ukulele is vain when you put the low G string on here. Okay? So um, that's all I want to say to you. I don't want to make a long video when I don't have to make a long video. Um, the, the ukulele is in. It's it's in the genre. It's in the. It needs to be in the mainstream. It needs to be talked about. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not enough ukulele players out there. There's not enough ukulele players out there. And I guess now that I know that it can be used to play authentic music and can be used as well to back up other instruments like the acoustic guitar and it can be used for rhythm you know in a in a guitar jam you know in a musical setting it can be used for rhythm and that I listen to you know some Hawaiian tunes and some some Spanish tunes where you can just hear that ukulele in the background just banging boom bump boom bump bump boom bump 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 and they just coming down with that ukulele strum, you know. And and meanwhile, the guitars and the keyboards and everything is doing all this other stuff. But the ukulele is just, you know. And you don't get bored of that sound because that's the greatest, one of the greatest things about the ukulele. So I figured I'd do this video today. 
um, because I haven't done nothing on this channel in a while. And um, I walked in the house and I picked this up because that's what I do. And um, it reminds me how much I love, you know, how blessed I am. And I'm eventually going to get me another ukulele. But look at this, man. Look at this. Look at this. Um, you know, look at this. I think Gretsch did a good job. They do a good job with all their instruments. And, you know, there, there's no gouch. I played a heck out of this, and there's no gouch in the fretboard. Um, all we have is this, this little stain here. Um, you know, and I did, the nut did come off on me after I had it a few years. Well, I had it after I had it about three years. Um, right around the time I moved in here, this nut, um, came off. It came loose. And I was playing one day, and as I loosened the strings, I could see the nut was loosening with the string. I said, oh my God, the nut came out. So, I got me some good super glue and put it back in there. It took me probably one minute. And that one minute, it never fell out again. Um, so, you know, um, this is a very good ukulele for the price. And um, I'm, I'm loving it. And um, it has a very nice, especially with the low G. So clean and crystal, crystal clear, you know. It's nice, and you can do so many different things, and... You can use this as a travel guitar if you play guitar, and you can use this to just play around the campfire if it's just going to be, you know, even if you bring an acoustic guitar and you want to play around with someone that plays the acoustic guitar, you know, you can. But the best way to play the ukulele is play it with Play it alone with its own group of small instruments. Other four string, eight stringed instruments like itself, like the mandolin and the mandolin family instruments and the dulcimer and the acoustic guitar. The acoustic guitar to to on the end there. Um, that's what Tamani Gardner does. But the the problem with that is when you play the acoustic guitar with it, the, the acoustic guitar doesn't get to express itself because if it expresses itself too much, then the, the ukulele doesn't get to express itself. So what Tamani Gardner does is she just has her girl play rhythms for her, okay? And she plays all her fancy stuff, including rhythms, on a ukulele. It's her show. And when it's your show, that's where this really stands out. When it's your show. Like, like um, Audrain or like Tamani Gardner. When they go out, it's their show. And anybody with them, they're playing the backup for them. But their ukulele, their little tenor, is the show. So I'm, I think my food is here. That's what I heard banging at the door a minute ago. I'm going to close this out. And happy voting. I hope you voted for Trump. If you didn't vote for Trump, let me know. I'm going to do a video about how dumb you are. I'm joking. Um, God bless you. Um, I will talk to you soon, pretty soon, um, with more. Um, as the Lord gives, in Jesus' name. God bless you.